Hey YouTube, check out this cool Jag that's just come in for a setup. Um, customer brought this to me last night and I was immediately like, yes, I need to show everyone this. Check out this amazing refinish on it. It's in a, a fire mist orange or a fire mist gold, something like that. And yeah, it's amazing. Just needs to be set up so we can get it going properly. So the first thing I've noticed is that this guitar is currently set up with some 10 to 46 gauge strings, which in my opinion is a bit too light for the 24 inch scale. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is remove the strings and make sure that the neck is straight so I can check the fret seating. Okay, so I can see that this needs to be loosened off a bit, so I'm going to just use an Allen key to loosen the neck off a bit so that it's straight. Okay, great, so that's straight now. Now I can proceed to checking whether the frets are all seated correctly using my Stumac tool here. Okay, so there was only a couple of frets that needed to be reseated, which is a really good thing. And now these frets are in really good shape, but I'm gonna go give them a polish anyway. As is usual here, I'm going to just use a three-step nail buffer to polish out these frets. So you start with the roughest grit, which is in this case the blue, then you go to white, and then finish with the grey. Okay, so that's the fret cleaning and buffing done. Um, as you can see, it takes a while, but it's well worth the effort in the long run. It's, uh, it's always the extra little things that you do in the setup that'll make a big difference in the end. So now what I'm gonna move on to doing is uh, widening some of these slots in the nut for the new strings, which are of a heavier gauge. There's no point having a nice bone nut if it's not cut correctly for the string gauge you're using. It's just going to be bad for your tuning stability. So let's get on and widen them. Okay, so now the nut slots are where we want them to be. Um, the customer did point out that the G-string was often going out of tune and might have been because of how the slots were cut. None of them were cut with the nice ramp and definitely the G in particular wasn't cut wide enough. So that would cause a string to bind and when it binds, you lose your tuning stability straight away. So now that's fixed. Hopefully that will help out with the tuning stability. What we're going to do now just to finish off this nut is um, polish it out because it's a bit rough from factory and always looks nicer when it's been polished. To do that, just use the same nail buffing technique as you use to clean the frets. Okay, so that's now nicely polished and 
Again, it's just the extra 1% of effort things that make the difference. This is just an aesthetic thing, but always looks nicer when it's finished properly. So now I'm just going to clean the fretboard. To clean the fretboard, I'm just going to be using some of Harren's board source. Um, really great stuff, can't recommend it enough. Just, all you have to do is spray some onto your microfiber cloth and then work it into the rosewood or whatever wood your fretboard is. Okay, and that's it. That's the neck ready for new strings. Before I put new strings on, I'm just going to give the body a quick clean too while I've got easy access to areas such as the pit guard. And again, I'll be using a Harrens product. This time I'll be using the speed wipe, which is again, you just apply it the exact same way as the board source. Try to use a different cloth after you've used the board source, of course. Nice rhyme. Okay, that was just a very rough clean because of course at the end of the setup is when you want to do your main clean of the guitar seeing as I'm going to be putting fingerprints and stuff all over it again in a second anyway. Okay, so now we're ready to put the fresh strings on. Okay, with this style of tuner, with the, the hole that you kind of string, you string through, what I like to do is pull it in through, through tight, and then to make sure I have enough windings, I drag the string back couple of fret lengths and then wind it. Of course I like to go one loop over the string protruding and then the rest of your winds will go underneath which will help to lock the string in place. So that was perfect so we've got about two winds below where the string is fed through the hole in the tuner. So what that means is you get a good break angle over the nut because the string is forced down towards the tuner. With these American Pro Jags, you'll notice that the tuners are actually staggered. So after the, the E in A string tuners, the posts are lower, so you don't need the two windings, you can probably just go with one, so to do that, just go one fret length back instead of two. Once you get to the unwound strings, I find it's a good idea to just tin the windings at the end here to help, help make sure that they're more structurally sound in Jags and Jazz Masters because the common problem with these guitars is the unwound strings will actually unwind from these windings here. So if you just tin them with a bit of solder that helps strengthen that and they won't unwind on you. Okay, so once that's done, tune it up to pitch. Okay, once we're roughly at pitch, we'll first set the string height, and then we'll set the pickup height, and then work on the intonation. Currently the action is sitting too high on the bass side and too low on the treble side. Um, 
what I would like to see on this guitar in particular is a maximum height action for the bass side of two millimeters at the 12th fret, distance between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string, and 1.6 millimeters on the treble side. It's also important to check these heights in the playing position too. You can see that the bass side still needs to come down further. Okay, cool, that's about perfect really. May even be able to go a bit lower on the E string, but the customer says that he likes to change tunings from standard to a half step below to even drop D, so maybe better to keep it at the two millimeters for the E, but it's still lower than what it was, so that's good. Just tune the guitar back up to pitch. Now we're gonna check the string height. If you've seen me set up guitars before, you know I like to use these brass feeler gauges to set up the height for the pickups. So what I look for on the bass side on single coil guitars like this is, I know I use this feeler gauge, but to give you a measurement, of course all these measurements are rough and they're not meant to be taken as what you absolutely have to do. So this is giving me about 2.3 mil for the bass side and then on the treble side getting about 1.6 mil. So that's around the fender specs that they give you. Of course that'll just be a starting point. You then have to use your ears to kind of uh, hone in where you want those pickups to be in terms of being even in output and even across the strings. Okay, so the neck pickup is way too low and the bridge pickup is way too high. So we'll correct that. And that's perfect. Okay, so from here we can move on to intonation. What you want to do is make sure the guitar is as in tune as possible. So then fret, fret the string at the 12th fret and it should tune to the same pitch as the open string. In this one it's a bit flat. That means that we'll have to make an adjustment on the saddle. A string's a bit flat. D strings perfect. Would help if the G is in tune. G is perfect. B is a bit flat. E is nearly perfect tiny bit flat. Also check the harmonics, although they're not as accurate as actually fretting the note. As harmonics they all read perfect, but when I actually fret the note is when the strings are pulling flat. Okay, so that intonation is all good according to this clip-on tuner, which is actually pretty accurate, but um, I will go and check that as well on my proper tuner too. Well, not proper, my pedal board tuner, so I should say. Okay, so once you're happy with your 
intonation, your string height, and your pickup height, and your the nut action. Also, be sure to check the nut action. So, I like to use a twenty thousandth viola gauge, and I like that to just be able to slide under the strings at the first fret. But I've already checked this, and yeah, action is all good. So now, this is where a lot of people will think you're done with a jag or a jazz, but you're not. Now you've got to set up the tremolo or the vibrato unit. So currently, with the locking button, what you want that to do is when it's in the locked position, which it doesn't actually lock, you don't want, there's, you see there's, you can hear that there's play when I pull up on the bar. Basically what you want is the button in the down position so that it locks and you can't actually engage the vibrato up. And I believe there's many diagrams online of how this should be set and I'll see if I can find one for you or make one even. So to fix this, of course this doesn't apply for if your trem is like a squire or something and doesn't have the lock button. That you can just kind of set to taste. But if you actually want to make use of this lock function, it's not doing its job if you can if you can pull the bar up like that. So basically we have to raise the height of the bar using this screw until this button can only just slide over and you don't have that play. So now with the lock disengaged, I can go up with the vibrato, but with the lock engaged, it makes no difference because it is locked. <laughs> okay, so that about sums it up for the setup part. Now all that's left to do is to give the guitar a thorough clean. So again, I'll be using speed wipe and I'll also use Harren's body butter which really brings out the colours and the nice shine of the guitar after I've done the speed wipe, of course. I love this finish. I knew as soon as the customer brought this in and I opened the case, I was like, yes, everyone needs to see this. So everyone, you're welcome. Wowie, look at that. Okay, so all that's left to do is let the guitar sit for about a day, make sure that the neck doesn't move after the truss rod adjustment and I'll give you guys some sound bites of the guitar because I know you'll be itching to hear that. Oh and if you're wondering what these controls do, basically it's a Johnny Marr style switch plate here. So basically what this switch is, is a four way switch which has at the bottom is just your bridge pickup, up one from that is both pickups in parallel, up again is just the neck pickup and your final position here is both pickups in series and this switch here is a phase switch which obviously will only switch your phase if you've got both pickups on either in series or in parallel mode.